Hi all, we're going to be talking about the erasure technique with charcoal. But the first thing to do is choose a meaningful image. I'm asking you all to think about what it means to erase as a metaphor. Maybe it means loss. Maybe it means change. Maybe there's something about reality or the world that you want to change or edit and erasure is an appropriate metaphor for that. I thought about it and settled on this image as a sign of industrial society's presence in front of the landscape. And I wanted to see what would happen if I erased it, leaving us with just the beauty of the landscape. And the first word of advice is test out with charcoal and a couple of different kinds of papers how it's going to feel to erase the charcoal. Some papers have a lot of resistance to erasing and some papers are very smooth and easy to erase into. So basically I'm using the edge of the charcoal to block in uh, the paper completely with, with charcoal. And then I'm taking my white plastic eraser in order to start to remove charcoal. So this time we're starting with the dark values and working our way light. And it's kind of important to think about erasing as just an extension of your drawing. So we're actually mapping out the whole composition with our erasure instead of drawing it out with charcoal from the beginning. So another thing to think about is it's okay to be sort of loose with it at first, like we do when we're normally drawing. We start off a little bit loose and then work on refinement over time. One thing that you're seeing uh, now is just me um, taking a razor knife to cut off some of the black rubber on the eraser and giving me a fresh uh, face of the eraser to work with. The cleaner it is, the more charcoal it's going to take away. You will find yourself having to do a little bit of maintenance on the eraser. Um, that's a normal part of this process. We want to eventually remove more and more, and so we need fresh parts of the eraser for that. Another thing to mention is that Newsprint paper won't hold up to a lot of erasing. Um, it tends to be very hard on the paper. And so one of our heavy duty papers or even Bristol board are more appropriate for this method. And if you remember from early on in the semester, vine charcoal is usually uh, much easier to erase than compressed charcoal. So just things to keep in mind. So one thing we can relate this all to is um, in our last drawing, the five value drawings where we kind of passed over the whole composition with really light pressure using charcoal and then we on our second pass we darkened it all significantly and on our third pass we darkened it even more in certain areas etc and it's kind of the same thing with the erasure technique the first pass we can't remove all of the charcoal we're still left with a medium value range uh, by the next pass, we can go a little bit lighter. 
And by the next pass, we can go even brighter than that. So you're, you're seeing me darken some areas. And basically, I'm making a value adjustment where I felt that the subject wasn't quite dark enough. And the other thing that I'm doing is uh, refining the edges, the shapes a little bit and giving my, myself um, some more of the covered area to erase into. At a certain point, I'm just going to settle because um, I know that my intention is to erase this structure anyways. So now I'm going to really start erasing uh, into the subject. And I'm kind of being careful that the marks that I make with the eraser aren't in any way sort of fighting or contradicting um, the directions of the background information, if that makes sense. So if I have a horizontal energy of, um, for example, wave ripples in the water, um, I'm not going to do really super heavy, strong vertical eraser marks because that would be sort of fighting the horizontal energy of the background. So just in other words, I'm thinking about the background as I'm erasing with sensitivity. I'm also using the eraser to sort of refine uh, the background, the landscape in this case. Um, to bring out the qualities in it that I want to. But maybe a really important point to make is I'm trying to strike a balance between um, this object that uh, erasing it is kind of the point. It has a little bit of a ghosty presence and that was my intention. I want to be able to see that there was something there that is absent now. But at the same time, I want to bring out uh, the beauty of the background information. So I hope that makes sense. So here, I'm starting to use the eraser pencil. And uh, as we know, this is a, a great tool for uh, getting some refinement erasing. And it's a little bit of a harder eraser, so it's actually going to, um, we can erase further than we could with the softer plastic eraser. So that's what I'm doing. I'm bringing in uh, some of this sort of horizontal energy of the water.
part of what was sort of missing is some of the surface texture of uh, the, the subjects that I'm seeing in, in my reference photograph. Um, the jagged rocks, um, some deeper shadows, uh, and maybe texture of plants, um, etc. And so I'm using my charcoal pencil now. And uh, so these are kind of um, refinement details. Uh, the charcoal pencil allows me to get much more sensitive line work and also to just go uh, in, into the deeper values that I haven't quite gotten um, with all of my erasing. At this point, I saw that the water is a little bit flat, and so I needed to bring in a little bit more contrast um, in terms of the water ripples in the front. So I'm using some vine charcoal, and then uh, I'm going around it and erasing um, to refine the shapes. And finally, for, for now, um, I was also seeing that the foreground was a little bit flat. And so I'm using the charcoal pencils to bring in some deeper um, plant forms into the foreground and also to deepen the shadows so that it has a more uh, textural and deep feel. It's probably worthwhile to mention the idea of uh, the color theory idea of atmospheric perspective again. Um, objects that are in the distance appear lower contrast and they're more gray or blue, so in this case gray, and objects in the foreground tend to be higher contrast, so deeper darks and uh, brighter lights. Um, and so, in a sense, I'm making this foreground more contrasty as well. So it, it'll have, it'll make more sense in terms of spatial relationships in the drawing. So here's the drawing that I've been working on for a while. Uh, it's looking pretty good. It might still need some refinements, so we'll probably talk about that next week. So thank you and good luck with your drawing, guys. I'll talk to you soon.